This is the practice test for Word 2019, and this is the file that we're going to be using. And instruction number one says to save it. First of all, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here, so it's a little bit easier to read. So we want to save it to our desktop, so we do a file, save as, and I want to browse to the desktop. And we're going to call this declaration hyphen and then first name hyphen last name. Okay, we want to set the margins. Uh, the next few things are for the entire document. So I'm going to do a control A. And um, we want to set the margins to one inch on all sides. That's on the layout tab here. Let's go to margins. And one inch on all sides is called normal. We want the font name for the entire document to be Times New Roman. That's on the home tab in the font group here. And Times New Roman is one of my recently used ones. I want the line spacing, which is in the paragraph group, to 1.15. I want the alignment to left, which is here, which is also control L. Uh, I want the font size to be 12 points. And I want to move the pink paragraphs to the beginning of the document. So my pink paragraphs are down here at the end. So select from here all the way to here. And we'll just do a control X. And then we will scroll up to the beginning of the document and we will paste that in with a control V. You can also go up here and use the paste button. Divide the document into two sections. Section two should begin immediately left of the word begin where it says begin section two here. And that part's actually pretty easy to see. It's a short document. We don't really need to search for it. Um, right here is where it says to begin section two. And I want to put a break in there. That's on the layout tab. And it is a break. It's a section break that's going to push the text down to the next page. The following instructions apply to section one only. So let's scroll back up to the top here. And we want a cover page. And you don't actually have to be at the top to do a cover page, but uh, we'll go to the top anyway. And so that's going to be on the insert tab. We want a cover page and we want the facet style, which is on the first row here. And we want to delete the subtitle, email address and abstract. So uh, here is the subtitle. Click on the little button up here and then hit the delete key. We want to get rid of the abstract. Uh, I don't see a button for that, but it's in a text box. So if I just hit the edge of the text box and click on it to get the solid line and then hit delete, that will go away. And if I scroll a little bit further, I've got an email address field down here. I'm going to click on that and delete that. Change the author to your name. Well, I don't have to change that because it's already got my name. Put today's date down here and you can either just type in the date. If you want it to be updated all the time, um, you can go to, let me see, insert uh, quick parts here, I think it is, and um, it's a field and uh, date. And then you can adjust the format, but we'll just take the default. So if I open that tomorrow, it'll say December 5th. Okay, um, so we're done with cover page. And now we want all the paragraphs in section one to have a first line indent. And so we're going to, we need to select everything here down to our section break, which is right there. And we want the first line indent to be 0.25 inches. So we'll just drag that over to the quarter inch mark. And we want the space before each paragraph to be six points. That's back on the home tab in the paragraph group. And actually there's an easier way to do that. It's also on the layout tab and we want the spacing before to be six points. Make the three paragraphs 
paragraphs three, four, and five. So let's go up to the top. That's up in our pink section here. So paragraph two is pretty long. Okay, so these are the paragraphs three, four, and five. And we want to make those into a bulleted list. That is also on the Home tab. And now we have it. Set the line spacing for paragraph one to double spacing. So paragraph one is right here. And our line spacing is here. And if we pick two, the shortcut for that is also control two. And now that paragraph is double spaced. And the next thing we want to do is a drop cap for paragraph one. And that is on, I think it's on the design tab. It is on the layout. Okay, let's try that again. It's on the insert tab. Uh, drop cap, and we want the dropped style. And next is to increase the margins for paragraph two by half an inch on both sides and set the alignment to justify. So uh, in paragraph two, just have to be in the paragraph because this is a paragraph formatting command. I want to increase the margins, and if I want to increase on the left side, I got to grab the little square here and drag that in half an inch. And if I want to make the margin larger on the right side, I got to drag that in by half an inch as well. So drag that into the six inch mark. And then we want it justified. So go to the Home tab and select Justify. You can also do a Control J. And now we've got a smooth margin on the right side. Add your name to the header in 10 point Verdana. So the easy way to get in the header is just go up here and double click in it. Let's try that again. And it's supposed to be right aligned. Well, the tab stops are center and right aligned for the middle and the right side here. So put your name in. And it said that what we want to do is we want to make that uh, 10 point Verdana. That's going to be back on the home tab. And Verdana is one of my recently used ones. And the font size is 10. In the footer, we want... And it doesn't actually say here, I guess, but uh, we don't want a footer on the title page or the cover page. And it's supposed to be centered. We've got a center tab stop right here by default in the footer. So just hit tab. And then we want to go to our header and footer tools up here. And we want to insert the page number at the current location. And we'll just do the plain page number. Okay, now we want to change all nine occurrences of the word GOVT. So let's get out of here by just double clicking outside of the header and footer. And we'll go back up to the top here and we'll begin our search from the top of the document. And we want to do a find and replace. And on the home tab, we've got a replace option right here. And what I'm looking for is GOVT and I want to replace it with the word government and I want to replace all nine occurrences. So let's click on replace all. And it tells us it made nine replacements. If we had started in the middle of the document, that number might have been less, but it also would have come up and asked us if we wanted to go back and search from the top again. So we can close out of this. Add a citation to the end of the last line of the first paragraph. So here's the last line of the first paragraph. And we want to do a citation. That's under References. And we're going to insert a citation. We're going to new, do a new source. And the type is miscellaneous, which is already here. It happens to be the last choice. The author is Jefferson Thomas. And the title is Declaration of Independence. And the year is 1776, and the city is Philadelphia, and that's all it says that we have to put in. And we can click on OK, and we will get a citation there at the end of the paragraph. Then we want to go to the bottom of Section 1, insert a bibliography. So we'll just scroll down here a ways and get to the end of Section 1, and insert a bibliography. That is also in the same group on the References tab. And we want the Works Cited option. 
and it says go to the bibliography and insert a copyright symbol and that's just a parenthesis c parenthesis and the um, auto text feature will convert that into a copyright symbol okay the remaining instructions apply to section two so we need to go down below our section break here let's go down to section two and we want to apply the heading one style to the first line styles are on the home tab and heading one is right here set the page orientation for section two to landscape section one was portrait uh, this is on the layout tab and we want to set that to landscape so now our page just got a little bit wider we can shrink it down a little bit we should be able to see the entire page set the number of columns to two so we just need to be in the section because that's a section command go to our layout tab and go to columns and choose two and I didn't say to put a line in there I don't think but uh, we'll put a line in there just to make it easier to see we've actually got two columns in the blue text set a right tab stop at the four inch mark so we can see the tab characters here I've got arrows indicating tab characters select all of that and then I want a right tab, which is actually what happens to be here right now. If, if it's not there, you have to scroll through it until you get it to show up, which I'm doing right now. And we want that at the four inch mark. Just go up here and click on the four inch mark. And now all of that stuff gets right aligned. We want to add a dot leader to that tab stop. So our tab stops are in the paragraph group, but they're not up here. We have to go and do the dialog box launcher when we get our paragraph dialog box go to tabs and make sure we've only got one tab stop here so it's selected by default but if you had more than one make sure you select the one that you're trying to modify and we want to add a dot leader down here click on OK and when we get back we should see dots going across from the left part to the right part we want to convert the green text into a two column table so let's select it all first it's got tab characters there it's the same text we had up here and we want to go to the insert tab and go to table we want to convert the text to a table and word will figure out that there are two columns there because there's one tab character on each row and click on ok now we've got a table we want to set all the borders of the table to a three point red line let's go to uh, borders up here go down to borders and shading and we want the color to be red we want the width to be three points and it automatically sets this it doesn't always do that but uh, if it doesn't just go in here and turn these lines on or off by clicking on them click on OK now we've got our red border set the width for column one so let's get column one selected here with a fat black arrow and let's go to our table design and table layout and we want the width of that to be 1.7 it's pretty close right now it's 1.61 then we want to go to column two here we want to adjust the width of it and make it 2.2 so it's a little bit big now we'll just hit the down arrow a few times and make it 2.2 insert a column break immediately above the table so right here is right above the table uh, breaks are on the layout tab Go to breaks do a column break it'll push the table to the top of a new page I want to add some word art with the text declaration of independence to the top of section two it says word art goes here okay so um, we're going to type in our new text and then we're going to select it there's more than one way to do this and then we're going to go to our insert tab and over here is word art it's got the little a that's tilted and it doesn't say which one we'll just pick one here and so now we get uh, blue text with the reflection it says choose any style font size and color that you wish so we'll just go with the default and uh, now we want to go to the picture of thomas jefferson and we want to apply a picture style to it so on the picture format these are the picture styles there's one they're called beveled oval black and if you look at these uh, there's only two that are oval that one's got a white and this one has black and that is the one that we want 
Then what we want to do is we want to center that, and we can either just do a Control E for center, or we can go to our Home tab here and click on Center, and it gets centered below the table. And that is the end of the practice test.